guys and today I'm gonna to be doing a little bit of a different video now since Dominion 6 has come out I've seen a lot of people online or in other places um, a lot of new players especially kind of wondering how to get started and what exactly they should do now I, I've been playing Dominions for quite a while but for a long time I, I really had no clue what I was doing and even now I still think I don't have a good idea what I'm doing compared to some other people but um, it is a very complicated game, and it can be very intimidating, I think, for a lot of new players. Um, one thing I will say is Dominions is not like many other games. Um, I've heard it compared, uh, I've heard other people compare it to things like Civilization or other kind of 4X games, and it's definitely not. It's not a 4X game. It's not really like anything like that. It, it's basically just an army battling game. It's a, it's a war game, basically. It's probably more similar to something like um, the Paradox uh, Grand Strategy games, if those were turn-based, as in you have a big map, you have kind of an economy you have to manage, you have um, certain resources and special units and things like this to go through. I guess maybe a better comparison would be um, maybe some other turn-based kind of strategy games. I can't really think of anything like that that wouldn't be more Civ-like. Uh, either way, but this is basically a war game, first and foremost, and you should think of it as that. Another thing is this is mostly an online focus game. Now it does have a single player mode, but the single player mode is incredibly limited. Um, it's still fun if you want to play, especially in Dominion 6. It's improved a lot since Dominion 5, but definitely if you really want to actually enjoy the game a little bit more and get into it, I should try uh, multiplayer a little bit. And to be honest, in Dominion 6, it's easier than ever to play multiplayer. It used to be you had to use a third-party service, and the only third-party service available was a really god-awful email-based client where you would send your turn in an email to the server, and then you would get the emails of everybody's turns back, and you'd have to load them in your game to play the turn. So that was not, not fun, to be honest. Like, it's very hard for any player who doesn't really want to go through all these steps to actually do that. Um, there were some other options in Dominions 5, so I used to play on a server called Blitz Server, which still exists and I quite like it a lot, but um, that one made it a lot more simple. You could just join the um, join the join their server directly through the, um, the network uh, screen here, if you go to the network um, through the game itself, and you could join up and play directly through that that service so that was quite nice and it made playing a lot easier than playing through the older email based servers and now with Dominion 6 you have a built-in online client so let me go in here I can go enter game lobby and you can see there's a lot of games available and you can see most of them are password protected so they're not public games um, probably these are hosted maybe on some private group or who knows what like uh, some friends playing or some other kind of private group playing um, there's a lot of them here, so it's hard to find uh, something. Basically, unless you're in some kind of dedicated Dominions group, probably it's going to be hard to find a game. So I, I usually play on uh, V or DomG and 4chan. Um, I know uh, Discord has a lot of games available, but uh, my testosterone levels are a bit too high to play on Discord, so I usually don't really go there. Um, let's actually get out of here. So again, what I want to get started with, I'm uh, not worrying too much about that, just saying that it's very easy to get playing online now more than ever. Um, just go wherever you feel like um, is comfortable for you and then join a game. Um, chat to people who are playing and see who wants to play. Maybe they might have some noob friendly games available. I know um, some places do have a lot of uh, new player friendly games, but I, I don't think it matters that much to be honest. Uh, my main goal for this video is to really get you started. So I'm not gonna go into detail about all the little features of the game, because there's so many features, especially all the magic and everything. I'm just gonna pick a nation that I think is good for a new player to learn and get started, and um, tell you how to get started. You know, make choosing the nation, of course, uh, making a god, the, a big part of this game is your god, and then also just getting started playing the actual game. So let's get started first. First, I want to go to this screen, Tools and Manuals. If you're playing online, you have to make a god first. And you see there's a few options, create a pretender god, create a disciple, and so on. Uh, just go to create a pretender god. Uh, disciples, you can worry about later. That's for a different type of game. This is kind of like a co-op game mode, where all pretenders is for the more um, general free-for-all sort of game mode. So I'm going to create a pretender god. Then you have to select an age. Now, the ages 
don't make too much of a difference. Um, it just chooses what kind of nations you can play. Each age has different nations. You can see the nations in the early age are not exactly the same as the ones in the middle age or the late age. Now, the difference between the ages, there is a lot of difference between them. Uh, for example, early age, a lot of the nations are going to have much more magic power. You'll have bigger, stronger mages and weaker units. The middle age is kind of in the middle. You have decent mages and decent units. And then the late age is the opposite of the early age. You have very strong units, lots of units available, but very weak mages. So that's kind of the progression here. Um, the idea is very similar to a lot of fantasy um, genres, the fading of magic. The early age has a lot of magic and kind of very primitive units. The late age has very little magic, but very high tech and powerful units. And that's basically the progression. And it also affects the enemies you'll face in terms of like uh, neutral enemies. The neutral enemy enemies will be weaker in the early age, but often have more mages. The later um, enemies will be stronger, but have fewer mages. Um, I'm going to pick middle age. I think this is a good area for a new player. Uh, not that it's easier. Um, definitely early age is easier in terms of fighting independent uh, units. But middle age is a good middle ground world to help you kind of know what to do regardless. Um, it, it's, it helps you get used to expanding against um, a variety of units. There's more variety in the Middle Age, and Middle Age also is the most um, varied in terms of different nations, I think, so Middle Age is pretty good to get started. And the nation I'm going to be cho choosing is Middle Age Ulm. Where's that? Here it is, Ulm, Forges of Ulm. Now, there are a lot of nations I've heard people talk about and recommend as a good beginner nation. Um, Ulm, of course. Um, I've heard some people say Formoria, an early age giant nation is good. I've heard people mention Agartha or some other nations too. I think all these can be okay. The reason I choose Ulm, even though Ulm has downsides, basically every nation has some downsides. Um, the reason I choose Ulm is basically if you're a new player, the hardest thing getting into the game is having that kind of confidence to play and not like be intimidated by the amount of choices you have and not be intimidated by all these different features or um, having a hard time dealing with the early, early game of fighting some independent units. And Ulm takes a lot of that complication away because it's a very straightforward nation for most of the game. And it does have a lot of complexity, but most of that complexity comes a lot later. And hopefully by the time you actually get later into the game, you'll be a little bit more comfortable and more willing to um, try some experiment with some things and plus by then you'll have a decent economy going you'll ha hopefully have a fairly big nation and you can kind of afford to make some mistakes by that point because Ulm is very strong in the early and middle part of the game uh, in early middle part of an average online game so it does help uh, give you that breathing room and um, help you feel a little bit more confident. So the reason I pick Ulm is it has very, very strong units, and I think a lot of new players really focus on the units. Uh, the mages are not very strong, and they're not very diverse, but we'll quickly go over the nation. I mean, this is not a nation overview. I'm just going to talk about the nation a little bit. Um, you can see these are the units. You have a lot of choices available, but basically you have choices between um, a guy with half armor. You can see he has a chain mail armor or a guy with full armor, he has plate mail. And the difference between the plate mail is a little bit more expensive. If you click on these units, you can see their costs. So you have a gold cost. How much gold does it, recruit, does it cost to recruit one of these units? You have a cost in resources, means how many resources does it take to recruit this unit? And a cost in recruitment points, which is kind of like based off of the population of recruits you have in whatever province. So you can see how many recruitment points he has. Now, since all these are human units, they're usually pretty cheap recruitment points. Uh, depending what nation you're playing, this they, these three could vary a lot. And this plays a big role in what you want for your scales later. Like, for example, all of the Ulm units are a lot of resources. They're not that expensive in gold. I mean, they're kind of expensive. 10 is pretty high for just a generic unit, but um, they're very resource expensive. So I want some scales later that will suit um, high resource costs. Um, out of all these units, um, you could really use anything. I'll talk more about what units you can use a little bit later. Let's also look at the mages now. Another thing about Dominions is you have sacred units. Now, Ulm is special a little bit because it doesn't actually have any sacred units. It does have sacred mages. 
this priest smith, but I think he's one of your few sacreds. You don't have very many sacreds as Ulm, and kind of the gimmick of Ulm is being anti-sacred. So that's another reason why I think this is a good choice for a new player. Uh, you don't need to think too much about um, your blessing with your god. You don't need to try to strategize too much with that because it doesn't really matter for you, and you're a big counter to a lot of strategies that many other nations play, which rely heavily on their holy, their sacred units, which have the sacred tag. Anything with a sacred tag will benefit from your god's uh, blessing power. They will be able to call upon the blessing of the god and get some kind of power from it. Um, because you don't have that, you kind of don't really need to worry about it. And you have a lot of these units with uh, this halt heretic effect. So this is kind of the anti-sacred effect. This means it will um, harm sacreds even more. And again, you even have an effect of Bane of Heresy, so it will um, also cause pain and hurt sacred enemy units. So this is really good if you want to counter other nation strategies and a lot of other things too. Um, Ulm gives you a lot of variety for things like thugs, which I'll talk about later, for things like communions. If you want to get into communions, you can do some very small communions here. Um, for a lot of other things too. So let's just move on to the god creation. So creating a god, this is probably one of the most important parts of the game. This really sets your whole strategy through the game in advance. You really need to know what do you want to achieve, what do you want to do, and what kind of things you want to be able to make or summon or whatever. So you kind of have to know a little bit about the nation, what things you have available before you actually make anything. So what do I have available for this nation? Sorry, I missed over there. Uh, in terms of magic, I want to look at the magic first. Let's look at which of these commander units are mages. Now, all of these guys are not mages. You can see they don't have any magic paths. Uh, my first, this is a priest. He has a priest path. This gives him a holy one power. He can use some holy level one spells. This is my first mage. He has one, two paths and a chance for another one. He has a fire path, means he can use any fire magic that only costs one fire. He has earth path, he can use any earth spell that costs two earth, or anything that is earth and fire mixed together. And he has a 20% chance of getting one of these. So all of these are pretty useful for you. All of these have some purpose, especially the astral. This one looks like a star. This is very, very useful for Ulm. And he has a few other features about him too. He's an unhindered researcher means you can take um, a very low magic score for your nation and he will still be able to get good research. This, these pile of books is his research ability. Uh, you have to research technology. Um, magic is basically the technology in this game and your priests, not only do they have to cast spells in battle and summon monsters, summon creatures, make weapons, they also are researchers. So they're doing research and researching higher levels of technology for your nation. Um, he has a few other things too, a research bonus, a resource bonus and a forge bonus. These let you make weapons and armor much easier, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Your next mage, sorry, let's go over here, is the Black Priest. This is a very simple mage. He's a holy two mage. We can cast holy level two spells, and he's also a earth one mage. And he has a small, small chance of these other paths as well. The next mage is your holy um, mage as well. He's a holy one mage. And he has the same paths as the other mage, the Master Smith, but he doesn't have a random chance. He just has a holy one. And otherwise, he's very similar to that. Another thing to consider is which uh, units are capital only. You can see when I mouse over them at the bottom, it says can only be recruited in the capital. That means that this unit you can only get in your capital uh, city. You can't get it in other forts you build later. All right, so let's move on to God Design. Now we know what the nation has, we need to think about what we want. So you can see this nation has a lot of options for different gods. Now the first part about choosing God is choosing a chassis, which is which of these little um, PNGs is going to be your God. Um, they have a lot of differences between them. Uh, basically the main divisions are the Dominion 1, are more or less just regular humans, like they're just like a guy with maybe one magic path and a few little features about him. Uh, they're very cheap. You can see this one costs 70 points. So he's very cheap to buy. And it will give me lots of design points left over to make, um, do more with, to have more flexibility. 
Next are the Dominion 2. These ones are also fairly cheap, depending which one you choose. And these are all uh, more or less monsters. Like we often call these um, monster or Dominion 2 monsters. Uh, some of them are not monsters. Some of them are kind of um, very powerful uh, units of sorts. Uh, not as much as the Dominion 3 ones, but a little bit more than the generic humans. For example, you have this guy, a Master Lich, who's a very common god. And he's just a, a Lich. Uh, he's immortal, so he has a lot of benefits here. He has a death path and he has things like that. So, for example, if I wanted an immortal god, which is different from the normal one, um, I could choose him. There's other things too. Uh, monsters are really good choices. And, for example, a good choice for all might be this one, the Three-Horned Boar. He's very cheap. And he's a good uh, fighter. He's got a lot of good um, features with him. Um, Earth and nature magic are very good for him and very good for your nation as all. Um, he has a trample effect, means he will run over units and just kill them by running over them. He has a berserk effect, so when he gets angry, he will just keep attacking and killing. And he's got a recuperation effect, that means if he gets injured, like he gets stabbed in the chest, uh, that will heal up over time. And he gives a supply bonus, which is good for your um, units a little bit later on. And he's some nice uh, scale limits here. Um, the turmoil limit kind of sucks for Ulm. It's not a big deal. And the growth is really good for Ulm. So this could be a good option for a god. If I was going to take him as a god, I might take something very simple like this. I don't even really need a bless. I might just take something like that. Um, if I really, really wanted a bless, I might go something like this. Just hard skin only. Now what hard skin does, it'll give him a little bit of extra protection. And you can see if I go to his protection score in his stats, um, his natural protection, this will just give plus five to that. So that's pretty useful. Give him like 21 natural protection. Uh, so that's quite nice. It'll make him um, have a much easier time attacking independent units. And basically that's the main point of him. He's not going to be doing anything special. He's just going to be um, helping you expand in the early game. So I definitely want to take him awake. That means as soon as the game starts, he will be active and I could use him right away and attack um, other units. This will help me um, expand my nation very quickly and um, help get a really early strong start. So this is a really, really good option. Very, very simple, you know, not much variety with him. Uh, as for these scales, some things I want to consider, I don't really need a big Dom score because, uh, Dominion score, because I don't have any sacreds. Uh, this score controls how many sacred units you can recruit. But since I don't have any sacred units, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't even bother with that. Um, I definitely want high uh, production, and as Ulm, I can get three production. Other nations cannot get it as easily. Uh, as for this, I can't really go high for order. I may just go net neutral order. I'm going to also drop my temperature scale. Now, temperature is a common thing for people to dump, means they reduce points. Because when you go below uh, the positive for anything, you get extra points. So this gives me more freedom to make something else. I think I'm also going to go negative, um, sorry, negative magic because my researchers don't really need magic to do anything and going negative magic will help me a lot. It can help me afford, for example, three growth and maybe something like that. Even this, I think, is a pretty good balance. I like having a little bit of luck. This is pretty uh, nice for me. And something like this could be a pretty decent uh, mix of uh, scales here. I think you'll have a really easy time playing a game with a god like this. Uh, another option could be something to give you a bit more variety. Now, let me see here. So, so a few other options could be, for example, the monolith. Now, this is more of a defensive-focused god. He can't move around. He's, where is he? He's immobile or inanimate. So he'll just sit in one spot until a little bit later in the game. Then you can kind of use some magic to teleport him around. However, he does have some benefits in that he has three paths to start. And these three paths are where ones you really, really want as Ohm. So having Earth Magic, for example, I can go Earth 4, uh, Earth 5 maybe. Uh, I can go fairly high Astral. And I want at least Nature 2, so getting 2 Nature there. Uh, I do have to adjust my scales a little bit from what I did with the last one. Maybe I can go uh, Magic 3, or sorry, Drain 3. Could maybe afford that. I can even bump up my Dominion a little bit more. I think I could go like that. That could be okay. So something like this could be possible. Uh, the reason I want this 
Earth and Astral, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but these three paths are really good for Elm and will help you do a lot of things later in the game. So definitely consider something like this. Uh, this can help you a lot. Um, if you want something that can actually move around, maybe you can pick, for example, one of these human units. Uh, these are all fairly decent options. Or even a Titan. Now these level 3s are called often called Titans. These are probably the least popular option because they're very, very expensive. And the, while they're stronger than, for example, a human, they're often not as strong as the monsters in the early game. And they often don't really uh, come online till later game. And by then, it's very easy for other people to defeat you. So that could be a problem as well. Uh, another option I might choose is something like this. Maybe the Titan of the Forge. Now, the reason I would choose something like this is for the fire access and um, earth. Maybe go something like that. Could be pretty good. Uh, I would also like a little bit of nature. Two nature. I do have to adjust my scores a little bit here. I would have to probably dump a few things to actually afford this. Uh, maybe what I could do, since I don't really need a bless, I could actually take him imprisoned or even uh, just dormant, I guess. Yeah, I could probably do that and afford even some better scales. He does give me the production bonus. So I can even afford something like this, taking that. And that's not too bad as well. Um, it doesn't really matter if he's awake or not. If he's dormant, he'll wake up in a year, which is pretty good. He can start making things. And this will also give me a lot of benefits as well, uh, having the fire and earth. Um, even though you have fire and earth with a lot of your mages, this lets you cast a few very useful spells. And then you have also the two nature magic, which is useful for different reasons. And so these are all great god options. Uh, before we actually move on, I'm going to talk about why you want certain paths. So here we are. This is a website, uh, sorry, a tool online called the Dominion 6 Mod Inspector. And you can see here I've highlighted a lot of things. And these are things that I think are very important for you to have or make as own. Now let's go through some of these here. Uh, the first of all, you can see I have a lot of items. Uh, all these ones up here, Dwarven Hammer, Lightless Lantern, Slave Matrix, and Sky Metal Matrix, as well as these three here and a few in the bottom. Um, these are all items that I think are very useful for you as own. And uh, for this, you want to get construction magic. So once you're in the game, you can use construction to research and get these better items. So at level three, for example, I can get this hammer. And this hammer gives me a benefit for making items. So this is really useful for me because it'll help me make items cheaper, make more items cheaper. So I can give it to, for example, my, my master smith and it'll make him, uh, help him make an item even cheaper than he already can. He already gets a bonus, but he'll get an even bigger bonus in that case. Uh, so Dwarven Hammer is very important. Next thing that's important is this one, Lightless Lantern. Lightless Lantern is important because it gives you a research bonus of plus 12. So if I give Lightless Lantern to a unit, again, perhaps the uh, Master Smith, he has 11. That means he'll have 23 research, which is very, very good research. And that'll let you research new magic very, very quickly. And since this is very easy to make for you as well, you just have to get to level... Uh, I know these levels, uh, sorry, you have to get to level 7. So once you get to level 7, you can really get a big research boost. From making these ones and the dormant hammers will let you make a lot of these very quickly not to mention you can sell them to other nations if you're playing an online game other people are definitely going to want to trade with you or make some deal with you if you provide them with things like lanterns or hammers and since you can make these things so easily as um uh, you definitely want to make a lot of them so these two are very important as well and another thing to enable these two is getting these ritual spells so both of these are enchantment level six uh, riches from beneath and eternal pyre what these do is they create gems for you so if i cast rituals from beneath with one of my mages i need a level five mage to cast this you could see why i went with the level five earth and level six fire for this guy this god of ohm because with level five earth and level six fire i can cast both eternal pyre and riches from beneath once i get to enchantment level six and what these do is they create gems for me. So create gems and create uh, resources. What Riches from Beneath does, it gives me a huge, huge income resource bonus from all my provinces. Um, so this is really, really useful for you to own because you need all that money, all those resources as much as possible. Uh, Eternal Pyre, what this does is create fire gems. So it'll help me create lots and lots of fire gems and that'll help me make a lot of lightless lanterns. 
Uh, there's some other spells as well. Um, I think there's another one. Earth Blood Deep Well. Sometimes uh, some of the names from uh, Dominion's... Oh, here it is. Earth Blood Deep Well. I was just misspelling it a little bit. So this is another one you can consider once you get to level 7. This generates uh, earth uh, gems for you. So generating earth gems, generating fire gems with eternal pyre, and a riches from beneath to get a lot of um, benefits from that. And that'll really enable you to make tons and tons of these kind of tools. Dwarven hammers for all your smiths, and lightless lanterns for all your researchers. Uh, another two uh, very important constructions I think you should consider are the two matrices, the Sky Metal Matrix and the Slave Matrix. What this does, you only need a Earth and a Astral Mage, uh, one with Earth Astral to create these, and you'll probably get that pretty easily throughout the game. Your Master Smith, about sometimes he will get an Astral Path, and if you're recruiting lots of these, you'll definitely get a few of these guys around. So what these do is they allow you to make a communion with mages that are not normally communion mages. So what is a communion mage? A communion mage is any mage with an astral power. Now what these allow is allow mages who aren't astral powered to join a communion. That lets you cast bigger spells. Basically all the mages work together to cast a very big spell, even if they are collectively all very weak mages. So you can have a bunch of little weak mages together. Um, they join up into a big communion and they cast a very big powerful spell. So both of these are very useful for you as Ulm in the late game. Definitely you want to start making these later. And once you have a pretty good empire um, economy going, you can start trying to experiment with communions a little bit. I wouldn't worry too much, but definitely it's something you could try out. Uh, next, I have a few other useful things. These are called boosters, and these are more to raise the power of your magic paths. And these three boosters I think are very important. First is your earth boots and coin of meteoric iron. Earth Boots, um, you only need two Earth to make these, and they give you plus one Earth. So any Earth 2 Mage, for example, again, for example, again, your Master Smith, uh, he's Earth 2, he'll be able to be Earth 3 very easily with that. So Earth Boots will help boost up your Earth Mages, plus one. The Coin of Meteoric Iron, if you have a Priest with um, Astral, you can make this and make uh, an sorry, make them Astral 2 very easily. Problem is you need Astral 2 to make this. So I would recommend if possible, if you really want to do with Astral Magic, um, try to take a God with some Astral on him. So for example, the Monolith God I mentioned before could be pretty useful for that. Something like, um, like this or something like that. So uh, like I said, the Monolith could be useful for something like that. Then you can get Earth and Astral on him. And that could allow you to make some of uh, the Astral Boosters to help get you started. All you need is one anyways. Once you make one of these coins and give it to one of your Astral 1 Mages, he then can make more of these for all your other Mages. So he can start producing them. You just need your God to get you started and then go from there. Uh, after that, at level 7 construction, you get this Helmet, which gives you another Astral bonus. So later in the game, when you want Astral 3 Mages, you can start making these. So this helmet plus the coin plus being already Astral 1, this will get you up to Astral 3 and that'll give you a lot of um, access to different kind of useful spells. So this is pretty good. Um, let's exit over here. Those are some things. A few other construction things I would like to consider. For example, at level 5 construction, you have the Amulet of Anti-Magic. This gives your commander some magic resistance, which is useful as all because all your units have very low magic resistance. And also at level 5, you have this one, Eye of the Void. For a penetration bonus, this is not a big deal, but if you want to get into communions, maybe give this one to the master of the communion. At level 7, you have the Stone Idol and Copper Arm. Uh, the Stone Idol is mostly useful for your spy. Uh, Ulm has a spy unit. He's stealthy, so he can sneak around without being seen, and also he has a spy skill, which means he can find information in enemy lands. Uh, for example, if you give him the Stone Idol, he can also become a heretic, which means he will lower the power of the enemy god, and that's very useful for you too. So this is a good option as well, and pretty easy for you to make once you get um, some the crystal coin, coin of meteoric iron made. Copper arm is also very easy for you to make. This just gives you an extra arm, so if you want to hold three weapons, you can have an extra arm to do that. So this is useful for tons and tons of things. Whenever you just need an extra bicep to hold something, this could be good. A few other things I highlighted here, for example, uh, some useful spells in Tharmaturgy, Iron Will and Tempering the Will. Uh, Tharmaturgy 3, you get Iron Will. This will boost the magic resistance of your units, which is good because you have really low magic resistance. 
That means if someone casts a magic spell on your units, they're almost always going to be hurt by it. And then at level 5, you get this one, which is the whole battlefield. All your units are affected by this and gives them all a big bonus of magic resistance. So it's basically the same thing, except a little bit better and for the whole battlefield. So um, this is good to go up Thaumaturgy. Last thing in construction again is construction 6. There's a special spell called Golem Construction. So once you can get up to construction 7 and make the skull caps, you can get an Astral 3, Earth 2 Mage pretty easily and start making these guys golems. And this is kind of your late game big option, making these guys. Um, these guys are very strong. Um, they're very, very good units in the late game. You can give them lots of gear and weapons and turn them into something we call a thug, which is basically a single unit who travels around and just fights whole armies, takes whole provinces by himself. This is a really, really good, good option. And he's something called Mindless, which means he won't be affected by a lot of common, common spells. So this is a good option in the late game for you. Get Golem Construction, get up to Astral 3, and then start making a lot of Golems. Uh, one last thing I'll talk about before I leave this page is a very simple idea for a thug. Now, this is something you could really, really easily make. All you need is level 3 construction. You can start making this guy. Um, your Black Lord, this is a common, um, easy-to-recruit unit that Ulm has. Black Lord here. He's a very good unit. Um, he's very strong. He's got full plate armor and so on. Uh, so he's a very good unit, just a very beefy unit in general. Um, if you take away his weapon, his Morning Star, his Morning Star is okay, but it's a little bit, um, it, it's not that great for his defense. It gives him a minus two defense. So give him a big sword like this, great sword of sharpness at level three construction, and a burning pearl, which is also really easy for you to make. This gives him an attack bonus. Um, both of these together will make him really a monster as a cheap thug, and I'll try to show that in the game I'm going to show as well. But enough with this, let's actually get started in the game. Now, what god will I choose? I think what I'm going to go for, since you have an easy time expanding, I want something that can break me into Astral a little bit later as well. Uh, one thing I can consider, as I mentioned, is the Monolith. This basically gives me everything I need. So I want to get maybe Earth 5 to get Earth Blood Deep Well a little bit later. Um, astral I should take, and at least Nature 2. Uh, the reason I want Nature 2 is to be able to um, make something called a Thistle Mace. This is another item you can create. Um, you need Nature 2 to make this, and the reason I would take this is to get a plus one bonus to Nature. So I can give this to a generic mage I find. Uh, sometimes uh, just random independents will have a recruitable Nature Mage. It's very easy. And I can give this to him, get a Nature 2 very easily, and start getting some Nature 2 mages to uh, do things for me. For example, give me poison resistance or things like that. Okay, so I'm going to pick the Monolith. I just like Monoliths in general. I, I think this is a great uh, Pretender God. Um, I want to take Nature 2, I want to take uh, maybe Earth 5, so I can do some things later, like, um, uh, what can I say, so like uh, like uh, Riches from Beneath, or Earth Blood Deep Well, that'll help me out with that later. I'm also going to take um, Astral, I think I will take fairly high Astral, so I can do some big Astral spells later. Uh, maybe I could bump this up to 6, that way I can cast Earthblood Deepwell very easily. And that gives me a little bit of points to play with. I don't know if I can actually afford anything else. I think this is fairly decent. Maybe I can go minus 1 there. Hmm, it's a little bit tricky. Probably can't. So I probably am stuck with something like this. This is okay though, this is not too bad. I could go neutral luck. I don't really need luck that badly. Um, I might even go one order and actually go one luck. And then use my extra to go a little bit lower here. That could be useful as well. So maybe just go the magic a little bit. Now magic, uh, it doesn't matter too much for research, but it also makes it harder to, for example, cast spells or make items. So I don't want to go too much drain, but a little bit of drain is not a big deal, I think. Uh, so I can maybe afford a uh, plus one there. Actually, for two, so I can even go six dominion. Uh, not much of a point for that, but I think this is pretty good. I think I'm going to go with this. So this will be my god. Um, if I'm playing online, I also want to set a password. So I can go here and type whatever my password is. This means other people can't log in and play my own nation. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to take him dormant so he'll wake up later and be able to do some things. And as for a bless, uh, I guess I could take a bless. There's not really any reason to, I don't think. Um, again, the bless doesn't matter that much uh, for Ulm. Ulm is not really a nation that cares about a bless. The reason I take this, uh, poison resistance, because you'll be, um, poison could be a problem for you. Uh, even though you don't really have any sacred units, um, at least your 
your priest smith will be okay, <laughs> I guess. Uh, as for these other ones, um, there are some items you can make to give sacred power to a normal unit. So maybe that could be an option later. Um, I don't think it's a big deal, so I wouldn't even care about this at all. You could easily go with nothing and it wouldn't matter. Um, either way, I'm going to move on here. Let's go ahead. All right, so now I have the god made. Let's imagine we're getting started in a game. All right, and here we are actually in a game. And you can see this in the middle is my capital, and these provinces around me are uh, something I might call my cap circle. Now my goal for the first little part of the game is to try my best to take these provinces. Um, if I can take these, I'll have a fairly decent time in the game. However, there can always be problems that happen. Um, definitely you have games where you barely have any options to expand to. Here I have how many? One, two, three, four options. And I don't even know what's here. There could be elephants, there could be something really nasty in these provinces that I don't know. So I need to be careful, but let's just see anyways. Um, I start with two units, two commanders, a spy who I'm going to send out somewhere, and a generic commander. Um, I'm going to have both of them do not much for the moment. I'm just going to be recruiting some units. So I'm going to go up here, um, press R or press this button to recruit. I'm going to recruit, uh, I guess, a mage for now, just to start researching. So you get a priest mage. And I think I'm also going to get a, what else? Let's get a few of the units here. I'm going to get a few of these guys with flails. These are very good against the independent units. Um, they have a lot of the attacks. They can hit multiple times with their flails, so they're quite useful. Um, so I'll get a couple of these and maybe some dogs if I can afford it. Yeah, let's get a couple more dogs. Dogs are nice, especially if you're fighting against horse riders. Uh, they'll be able to fight back against them a little bit better. Uh, but let's end the turn here. Not much I'll say. Also get my research set up while I'm waiting. So there's a few things I want to prioritize. You can see I start with Conjuration level 1. Everything else is level 0, and I can't do much with level 0 magic. Uh, what I'm going to be going for first, I think, will be... I think will be Alteration. I'm going to try to get up to Alteration 3 first. That'll help me get a few useful spells like Earth Grip and Earth Meld, which are both very useful spells for my mages to cast. Um, some other spells they'll be able to cast as well that are quite useful, but those ones are all quite good. Uh, the main other things too, like um, Stone Skin or um, Anti-Armor spells, things like that. Uh, there's not too much else I really want. I just really want Earth Meld. This is a very useful spell for um, slowing down enemy units, uh, trapping them in the earth so my slow um, uh, infantry can walk up and hit them. So I kind of want that. After that I want to get Construction 5 and then maybe start getting the Thaumaturgy. Right, so that's very good. Let's end the turn here. All right, now I can see some of my neighbors. And it looks like this is not too bad. Uh, this one's quite a big province, but it's mostly light infantry, some heavy cavalry, so I should be careful there. Uh, this one looks like Ithiads. Ithiads are quite weak, so this is a good place to expand into. This one looks like militias mostly, so this is also quite easy for me to attack. And this one just looks like archers and militia, so again, quite easy. So this should be pretty, um, not too difficult for me to expand around. Let's change my production a little bit. I'm going to recruit this guy. And in the meantime, I'm also going to get a few black, black uh, knights. What I'd like to do later is make a black lord and try to use that for expansion. So I'm going to get a few black knights and a black some dogs as well. That's good. So I'm going to put these units in and then I'm going to send this group out. Let's actually leave the dogs here. I'll put these two in different groups. So this commander can have three different squads. So you can see he has uh, three squads here of different types of units. You can mix units together if you like, but it doesn't really matter too much. It just depends what you want to do. Um, in this case, I'm going to have the pikemen in front because they have pikes. They will be able to absorb uh, the attacks a little bit better. Then these guys are going to come in the back as well, a little bit after them. Let's put them a little bit further back so they kind of catch up with the pikes a little bit later. Can even do sparse lines, spread these guys out a bit. So this is pretty good. I think this will be not too bad. So this guy stay behind his troops. Right now, let's tackle these provinces. I think all of these are good options. I think where I'm going to go actually is which one I can actually move somewhere else. I think I will go for this one. Let's go here next, Shambalak. Then I'll move my spy somewhere else. All right, let's end the turn here. Uh, what am I recruiting now? Let's, um, it's pretty good. All right, let's end the turn. 
Okay, how'd that battle go? Went pretty well. No losses. You see, these guys do quite well against most of the independent units. The main thing you need to look out for if you're playing this Ulm is anything with a cavalry or elephants. If you look at a province and see it has cavalry units or elephants, you should try to be pretty careful fighting that. Um, cavalry, with they have a charge attack. They will do a lot of damage to your uh, just kind of militia units or so your infantry units and elephants will just totally stop you so you have to be careful um, I could see some of these have infantry infantry if I look at the province it'll pop up and say what's there if I have my spy he'll give me a lot of detail looks like I'm quite close to an enemy here's Tinchi over here so I gotta be careful where am I gonna go from here I'm gonna actually move into this province I think I should be able to take that one I'm also gonna remember to put up the province defense let's put a few in here I should click the defense button in the province tab in the side here and I'll be able to put a little bit more defense there. Now don't put too many, this is kind of a waste of money if you go too much, but just a few is okay. Next let's recruit a commander. I'm going to get a black lord and him with a few horsemen should be able to do quite a lot of damage. Let's try to see how well this goes next. Let's end the turn here. All right, battle here went pretty well. Took a few losses, however, against the heavy infantry. Not too big a deal, though. Looks like they do quite well. These um, flail units are really good for expansion. These guys and your axe units are all quite good. Um, I'd probably save the axe guys for later when you're fighting stronger player armies and the flail guys for um, just hordes of independent units because they will kill them very quickly. Right, not too bad. Uh, where can I go next? I can only attack uh, Tinchi next, so I don't really want to do that yet. I'm going to actually move these guys back. We can bring them back home. Let's actually set up another little group. So I have these guys. I'm going to put them with this commander, and I'm actually going to set them on guard commander. This will make them stay with him and follow him around the map. So they'll just do whatever he does. I'm going to hold one turn and attack the rear. And I'm also going to give him some dogs. So the dogs will just run in and cause trouble while the horsemen will run around the back and uh, attack the rear. Let's move these guys over here. All right, that's pretty good. And let's see how well that goes. Actually, let's change that a bit. I'm not going to have them hold. I'm just going to have them attack immediately. Let's put them a little bit further back so they hit after the dogs. All right, that's good. And let's see how well they do against one of these provinces. Let's send them against the Ichthyids over here. And recruitment. Uh, I think I will just recruit um, some more generic uh, infantry units. Let's get more of these flail guys for now. Some more dogs. Can't afford that many. Okay, that's pretty good. I think that'll be fine for now. I'll get another commander for later. The commander you choose is a matter. I'm just going to choose one of these generic guys. These guys, can I afford that? Let's do that. That's okay. Send these guys home as well. Right, there's a battle here. Oh, beaten. So too bad. Let's take a look at that battle here. We're beaten, but we killed everything, it looks like. So maybe they ran away. Let's see how well these guys do. Oh, it looks like they're running. Yeah, they ran away. It's too bad. I think my commander died. Yeah. So my commander... Did my commander die? No, he didn't die. So I don't know why they ran away. They killed almost all of these Ithbids, but they decided to run off. So that's kind of a shame. Too bad then. Uh, well, they're still alive, so maybe we can send another force out there in a few minutes. I'll try again with a few horsemen. Let's get a few more. Uh, some more dogs, too. Let's try it one more time with that. See if that actually can work this time. We'll send these guys out here as well. Let's take um, let's take this province. Why not? Let's send another small force of these horsemen out. Same idea again. Horsemen and dogs. Now I should be able to take this this time. I don't know why they failed so hard last time. 
In the other turn, I'm going to get a few more of these flails, and I'm going to send those out a little bit later with one of my other groups. That's good. End the turn here. Okay, let's see how these battles go. So this time, there's only one, there's only a little bit, a few left. How many of there were? One? Oh, 20, okay, but one died and they ran away. So we finally took that, not a big deal. Looks like they just killed the commander. And then this was, again, pretty successful, not a big deal. So there, that was just a shame the first time. I don't know why they decided to run away. They had a big morale uh, dump for some reason. Let's see how well these guys do against some militia. And these guys can move into one of these provinces, maybe right here. Now my cap circle is pretty much complete. Just this one's a little bit of a problem. I'll try to go at this one two different ways. And I'll show off a strategy you can use against um, cavalry units using a lot of dogs to hopefully suck up the lance charge. And then let's get a few pikemen as well. Okay, let's get a bunch of dogs. And that should be okay for that. We'll see how well that goes. But let's try this out. We'll send that next turn. All right, two battles here. This one went quite well, no problem. Let's see how well that battle went. Yeah, I'm losing my pikemen now, but these guys with the axes and the flails have really no problem just taking a huge groups of units, especially the flails. The flails are your best bet, I think, for expansion. Axes a little bit later in the game. Let's see how this one went. Yeah, the knights, no problem as well. Most of the dogs died, but here you can see how effective the knights can be if they don't run away. So knights go in the back. Yeah, and just pop all these guys. I'm not sure where the commander is. Looks like he's right there. And yep, they killed the commander and they'll die. Now the good thing is these knights have a very hard are very, very hard to kill. Are they running around now? So they're running away too, I guess. Luckily, the enemy ran away first before my troops ran away. All right now, I'm going to try to attack this province. Uh, it looks pretty big. It's just 40 right now, but I know it's like 100 or something. Uh, let's give this guy his army here. And let's put a bunch of dogs with him too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these dogs in front. These dogs are here to catch the... Let's also put the pikes in front too. These dogs are here to catch the spe uh, sorry, catch the lances when the cavalry charges. They will catch the lance charge. Hold attack. Let's attack archers too. And then these guys are just going to run in and hopefully get lanced. They will probably all die, but they will stop the lance charge and be able to make it easier for my units to come and attack. So let's have this guy stay behind troops. And we're going to do a bit of a pincer movement. Have this guy move in here. Have this guy move in the side here. And both of them will attack at the same time. These guys, uh, these guys can move up somewhere else. I gotta move them over from here. I can't bring them back. Maybe I'll actually bring them home, and we can get a few renewed recruits for him. So let's give him a few more flail units. Let's end the turn here. Let's see how well this battle goes. And this will probably be the last battle of this video. I just want to show a very quick expansion around your cap circle and getting a good start as Alm. Battle went pretty well, not a big deal, 78 units, and no problems. Let's see how well my idea with the dogs oh, went against the cavalry. So here are the dogs, they're going to run in on their own. And you can see they run into the cavalry, so the cavalry was charging, they hit the dogs first and stopped their charge. So that's the main purpose of the dogs, they're just there to hit the cavalry and pretty much die. But you can see that really stopped that big charge from hitting my units and just waste their time. You know, they end up running after them and stuff like that. So that's pretty good. These archer cavalry are not a big deal. These guys will just run away. But the main cavalry was the um, the charge that came first. And it looks like no problem. They're all running away, getting killed by my units. So pretty good. I think that's enough here. So I'm going to end this video here. Um, just a, again, a quick overview of getting started as a fairly decent um, starting nation, uh, some strategy, sorry, some priorities for research or production um, throughout the game. 
and some a few god ideas as well. I hope this will help you get started uh, playing. I think this is a really uh, great nation to start with. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to play, and you have a lot of options available, even though it's also very simple for getting started. Uh, you do have a lot of late game potential if you really want to try for that, but it's something that you don't need to worry about for quite a while. So you can get started, get a really strong start, maybe even win the game early. Ulm has a really high win rate online, so that's always a, a great thing too. If you're a new player, give you a lot of confidence. Like I said, the main thing is having confidence in yourself playing. Um, don't be intimidated. Um, just pick something simple and go for it. Uh, either way, guys, I'll see you guys again next time. And goodbye, everyone.